Hello everyone. Welcome to today's lecture on Fourier transform. What is Fourier transform? Let's start by writing the equation for Fourier transform. So here, on left hand side of the equation, we have what we call as x of k, which is the Fourier transform that we intend to find. On the right hand side of the equation, you have the input signal for which we are finding the Fourier transform. Then you have n is the number of samples which represents the length of your input signal. Then you have small caps k and n which represents the sampling index of your input signal and the Fourier transform. So the sampling index just say that we go over the entire input signal one at a time from 0 to n minus 1. Another important thing to note here is that k is equal to n, which means the length of your Fourier transform is always the same as the length of your input signal. Next, we have what we call as a complex exponential. The whole point of applying the complex exponential to the input signal makes the Fourier transform a complex variable. The Fourier transform, when we say we are applying Fourier transform to an input signal, in essence what we are doing is we are multiplying the input signal with this complex exponential over the range from 0 to n minus 1, then summing all those in the order of k to get your x of k. So this entire equation is put together by two mathematical operations, summation and multiplication. So you have an adder, then you have a multiplier. Next, let's try to understand this equation better in a more much graphical representation form. So for to, in order to do that, what we are going to do is, first I'm taking this input signal to be 1. So I'm replacing my x of n with 1, so which means this entire equation is now primarily controlled by this exponential. Since 1 doesn't have much say in the how the Fourier transform is going to be or how the Fourier transform is going to look, this entire equation is now controlled by exponential. We are going to see some properties of this complex exponential in this illustration. So we are going to do this for 128 samples. So let us see what's going on. So we have x of n is equal to 1 which means my input signal is a constant 1 for 128 values. Then k is equal to 2. So that is x of 2. So when k is equal to 2, so my Fourier transform is plotting 128 points in a circle. Now when k is equal to 4, so take a note, when k is equal to 4, something interesting happens. What's happening? I am seeing the 128 points getting plotted in the same circle but in around three cycles. So the 128 points are getting fitted in this circle over three times or that three is your n minus one. So in this case I'm going to do it as eight then I'm going to get it as seven times. So the circle is getting filled by 128 points seven times. This is because we are indexing from zero or you can say that this is almost eight times with 128 points next <clears throat> we'll see one more for k equal to 12 then you see you're going to go over this for 12 times what does this say it says that a fourier transform has a cyclic property that cyclic property is what is normally referred to as the frequency of your signal that is one thing which is clear from this analysis. Let's go to the next representation where I'm going to plot all these in one go. So what we just saw for different values of k, I'm plotting it all in the same graph. Then I'm going to see k equal to 8, k equal to 10, 
and k equal to 12. k equal to 14, k equal to 16. Good. So now you see a pattern formation here. So I can say that the Fourier transform is about the cyclic representation and it has something to say about the pattern formation. So two things we have seen. So these are for different values of k when n is equal to 64 and n equal to 48. So as the value of as the number of samples goes up, the pattern becomes more and more dense and more and more complex. So this also has certain applications. Now let us begin to understand the Fourier transform a little more better by replacing the one with an actual input signal, which is a sine wave. This sine is very important. A sine signal is so important because it's used in almost all aspects of engineering and mathematics. So let us see what a Fourier transform looks like with x of n is equal to sine 2 pi nf. So here, the n is already discussed. What is n? We know it's a sampling index of the input signal. f is your frequency or the number of cycles. So the frequency or the number of cycles is again popping up here. So let us see how this Fourier transform looks like. So here I'm going to have the input signal on my left hand side and the Fourier transform on the right hand side. So you see here we have a sine wave of eight cycles, which means I'm going to have eight ups and eight downs. So if I count, I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So for four cycles, I'm going to have four ups and four downs. And you see how the Fourier transform cancels. out. So the Fourier transform is 128 points plotted over this space in a very symmetrical and a very patterned fashion. Then sine wave has two cycles. You're going to see the same thing happening. So the blobs are getting less and less in number. So initially we were having around 16 blob, then 8 blob, and now only 4 blob. When the sine wave, the next, you're going to see, when the sine wave is having only one cycle, and your k is equal to 1, your blob eventually becomes a single blob. So your blob just reduces as the number of cycle reduces. That is one way to look at it. So you have only one cycle and the Fourier transform is just a single blob. But there is much more to it, which we will see in the next illustration. Now, what I have here is when the number of cycles of sine wave match the value of k, the Fourier transform consists of just a single circular blob. So what that means is here the sine wave is having one cycle and the value of k is equal to 1, the k is equal to 1, I am seeing just a single blob. So let us see what will happen when I have two cycles and Fourier transform for k is equal to 2. Again I am getting a single blob. Interesting. So let us see for higher number of cycles what happens when the k value is matching four cycles you have four ups and four downs here the Fourier transform is again a single circle we want to be sure with this so we're going to see one more then we'll fix this so you have here sine wave is equal to six cycles and then again you are seeing the same pattern so this means when the number of cycles are say n cycle then the nth Fourier transform will have just a single blob. This also means a single circle means also a peak in your graph. So whereas this n cycle or the 10 cycle represents the frequency of your input signal, the Fourier transform is going to show a peak which we will be discussing in the next videos. So that peak tells us about the Fourier transforms frequency property. So now I have, uh, we will end with this final demonstration. 
So here for the number of cycle equal to k equal to 7. So I have my number of cycle and k matched. So what I am seeing is I am representing these points with different diameters. So what you see is the points are coinciding with each other which means the points are getting plotted on one above the other and you are getting gonna see almost seven circles here and that is how the Fourier transform gets plotted whenever the number of cycles is equal to the value of k. So with this we come to the end of the lecture. So three things was very clear. The Fourier transform tells about what is the frequency of the input, what is the pattern capture in the input and something about the number of cycles or the periodicity in the input. Thank you for listening.